And a five, four, three, two, one. And we're on. Kathleen Overchuck, I can't believe you're here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're normally here, but I haven't seen much of you in the uh, last couple of weeks for good good reason. Um, You know, this is going to be a fun topic today. Uh, We're going to talk all things Tiger King, of course, a show that everyone is uh, right now obsessed with. Uh, Kathleen, of course, is um, let me let me tell you a little bit about Kathleen. She's the host of uh, Wild Side TV, thirteen episodes. You, you know that show is still running somewhere. <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. It's still running uh, on another planet, I think, right now. And uh, also the host of Florida TV. Um, and she has been sort of my co-host on these shows. Um, for gosh, you know, we've been involved together with doing television stuff for twenty years and what's weird about this whole tiger king thing is we've got sort of a a a strange i don't know connection or vibe to it you're you're one of the few people you think about it who's truly spent the night at carol baskin's property yes you have slept there yeah and you have video Yes. Uh, we um, have video. Yes, yes. we have video. Actually, when, uh, and, and let me explain. She is the uh, love of my life. And, uh, you know, since we met during one of our shoots, one th- this shoot actually was one of the earlier shoots we ever did together. And wow. we were doing a story on you, and uh, which was at uh, uh, what was called Easy Street, then became Big Cat Rescue. And that's where Carol Baskin lives in Tampa, Florida which we're gonna show you that piece here in just a moment, but that's when we first kind of uh, connected a little bit. Yes, yes. Are you cool trying to- place, it, it, it was a really, it was a really neat place. Yeah, yes. yeah, no, it is, a, it is a, a neat place and I think it's still open uh, to the public. You know what I thought we'd do? I thought, why don't we, um, why don't we check out this package and let me just set this up this is a story we did on kathleen this is maybe i don't know maybe around 2000 <laughs> is that right yeah, yeah. 1999 2000 i'm sure we look the same <laughs> oh identical oh yeah yeah that's, i hadn't thought about that yeah well you look the same um oh, no. and we were doing a story on you as you were still a uh, still photographer mm-hmm. and um you decided that you'd go to big cat rescue which was uh, Easy Street back then. I want to be clear about this so this makes sense. And um, and then we'll explain it afterwards, what what we were doing there and, and the story. But I think the story sort of explains itself. And I was working for news for a television station in Orlando, Florida at the time, doing a story on you. For you folks listening on um, Apple Podcasts, some of the streaming services, Spotify, of course, if you want to see the the actual video, you'll need to go to YouTube uh, so you can watch this story. Otherwise, you can listen. So let's, uh, let's check out Big Cat Rescue back in 2000, home of Carol Baskin. Kathleen Overchuck has always dreamed of photographing wild animals. But growing up in Orlando has not exactly given her the chance to go one-on-one with many lions and tigers. Oh. <laughs> that is until she discovered wildlife on Easy Street. Hidden not far from the skyscrapers of downtown Tampa sits a most unusual animal sanctuary. A 40-acre home for exotic cats. But you don't just watch them through tall steel fencing. Instead, to see you go inside their cages. It's wonderful to be able to go right in the cage and you're right there, they're right there. There's, you know, you can't get that close out in the wild. Okay, you got it. Okay. At Easy Street, not only do you go inside the cat cages. When you guys feed the tiger, I need you to hold the chicken like this so it's stiff and goes right in. You pick a square right in front of his mouth and he'll take it from you just like that. Just like that, guests line up to help feed the kings of the jungle. Our micro camera captures this hand-raising experience. But tiger feeding is only the beginning. Guests can spend a night in a rustic cabin. Big deal, you say? It is when you consider the cabin is inside an exotic cat's cage. Guests can wake up petting a wild serval. 
Oh, what a good girl. Yeah. Carol Lewis is the creator of Easy Street. Since the early 90s, this property has slowly become an orphanage for 150 unwanted exotic cats. And these guys were at a fur farm, so they would have ended up being coats as were the first 56 cats that we brought here. They were all scheduled to be slaughtered. But it's not just the opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with wild animals during the day. Here at Easy Street, the other thrill is what happens when the sun goes down. In pitch darkness, visitors take a guided tour of the cat habitats. This once-in-a-lifetime opportunity allows guests to see felines in their nighttime environment. For Carol Lewis, these unusual visitor encounters are the sanctuary's monetary survival, and she believes the animal bonding pays off in many ways. It's only after they've created that bond that they're going to be willing to do things like save habitat or to really um, get out there and do something to preserve these animals in the wild. And while it may not be the wild plains of Africa, for this photographer, Easy Street is an animal encounter she will never forget. Randy Roush, Fox 35 News at 10. You were just pointing out during that, um, so everyone's clear, she was Carol Lewis at that time, uh, married to Don Lewis, which we'll talk about in a moment. And uh, there's so much happening in that story when you look back. And um, for people that have never been to like a, a rescue or something, um, back then, I don't know how much has changed since we've been there, but they would always allow you to do a lot of things. Um, and they wanted to show that. And it, it, it may seem strange now looking back at it, but if you saw the package there, like one of the things you got to do there, and I still can't <laughs> believe you got to do this. And, and even if Carol was watching this, I'm sure, I know they've gotten rid of this. Yeah. But what they did is they took a habitat. So it was a pretty big caged in area, if you remember, and it's what they just saw. They built like a cabin inside the cage. And then outside of the cabin, but still caged up, was a wild serval, which is sort of a big, I don't know, what would you describe a serval? Beautiful animal. Yeah. What would you describe it as? It wasn't a, it wasn't a big cat, like a, a lion yeah. or tiger, but it was a big a big cat. Right, Yeah. right. Yeah. So you would, you, would, you would get to spend the night, and this was, by the way, I know it sounds wacko now, but at the time, what they're trying to do is just raise money uh, any way they can to keep um, Big Cat Rescue, you know, going, going because they got to raise money somehow to pay for all the food and the property taxes and blah, blah, blah. Well, as you saw in uh, Ti Tiger King, it cost a lot of money to support these these animals. Yeah, and, weren't um, they weren't they saying in something like 60000 a a month or something like that just in I food? I think it was 10000 per big cat, so per yeah. lion or tiger, it's like 10,000 was one guy's quote, and then the Tiger King said it was about 3,000, okay. so uh, per cat. Um, but you have a lot of cats, That's that, yeah. can, that can add up fast. Yeah, so then at that time you could spend the night they, they remember we, we even thought, can you let the serval in the room? Remember when we, we, we first got there, we were like, can you let? And she's like, no, no, no. Yeah. But I think they used to do that actually even before we went there. <laughs> I think they would let the cats in the cabin all night long and people weren't getting sleep and the cats were wrecking, wrecking clothes and stuff. Yeah. I remember that story before we went. Yeah, it was probably not the uh, best idea to let a uh, large cat sleep with. <laughs> wild animal. <laughs> with wild animal. That, that could have really gone bad when you think about it you yeah. know but you could go stand outside again the cabin but you're still in a cage and I don't know we I think we were throwing the ball to the serval or some sort of thing yeah. and uh, you got to play with it which was which was kind of uh, cool at the time in the cabin I don't know if we showed much of it but uh, it was you know it was pretty basic inside um, it had water it had a refrigerator and yeah you know well you weren't really there for the cabin you were there yeah. for the experience right the, uh, right the right um, so that was a cool experience. And also, I think in there, you had like a night walk that you could do at the rescue, which we did. And you'd go see the lions and the tigers at night. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. You could go see what they're doing because they're usually a little bit more active at night, uh, a little bit more curious at night. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember that being kind of cool. And then the other thing you could do, do you remember you could hand feed <laughs> this is hard to believe, but you can, they would have guests being able to hand feed 
In fact, we might be able to see some video as we're talking. You could actually take like these tongs and hand them to a tiger, you know, through, through the, uh, through the, the cage. Yeah, yeah, you weren't in the cage. <laughs> Thank, God. <laughs> Thank God um, for that. Um, but that was, that was, you know, that was kind of cool and um, kind of a neat experience. Mm -hmm. Did you, you, and then you well, were, you were getting shots, obviously, a lot of uh, photography shots. Yes. Still shots. Yes. Well, there's one thing interesting about us over the years is we love animals. And um, and we've gotten to do a lot of cool things with animals, both in captivity and out in the wild. And, um, and, and uh, yes, and, and so this is just another one of the cool things that, um, that's out there to do. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and I, and I remember I... Um, I think I, be, I I was also working at a TV station in Tampa there for a while, and uh, I remember going to Big Cat Rescue one, two, three, I don't know if it was like four or five times. Uh, they were very welcoming. They were very nice to the media. Um, I will tell you, there was nothing odd or weird there. The cages were... I, I, I saw in Tiger King, they were... I don't know. Um, Joe Exotic was talking that they, you know, housed them you know, not good or in small cages. I never saw that at all. Yeah. I, saw, I only saw big habitats and, you know, nice places for these cats to roam. I, did you see anything otherwise? Well, if I remember correctly, which it has been some time, so my memory could be off a little bit, but I remember that they would come into a little cage to eat so they right. could safely put the food there. They'd have the, the animals come in and then they'd go back into their big habitats. So I think that's what he was talking about was the little place that they'd go to eat. But then I do remember a nice big habitat for them to roam around and run and play in. Um, I also remember them um, splashing in the water and right. having fun in the water. And I remember thinking, gosh, that's 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 cool. Yeah. So, um, and I'm pretty sure Carol feels the same way too. It's just sad that they can't be released back out into the wild. Um, th these were lions and tigers that people did not want anymore, and so Carol took them in. But it's sad because they still have to be in a, an enclosed inhabitant in inhabit. There. <laughs> habitat. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Yeah, cage, whatever. Yeah. Fa habitat, fa fancy word for caged in uh, animal. Yeah, right. yeah. So, um, yeah. but but you do you do wish that they could be released. Yeah, it, back out in the wild, and they just can't. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's talk about Carol Baskin. You know, everyone is obsessed with her now. Um, you know, back when we did this story there in you know the year two thousand. Uh, that was not new news around the Tampa Bay area about Carol Baskin and her husband, Don. Um, if you haven't watched this the t uh, TV series on Netflix, uh, check it out. You'll learn more about this. But the, the short story uh, uh, of this is her husband, Don, um, age 60 at the time, I don't know, 1997, um, suddenly disappeared, uh, vanished. Um, they found his van, I think, at uh, the, a, a small airport. Um, that was not so strange because he was a pilot. Um, he did, a, and I think even her, did a lot of trips to Costa Rica. And so it was not that unusual for them to, you know, him to be flying. Now, they found the van at the airport. Don disappeared and never to be found with a trace. And the story, if you watch The Tiger King, is, you know, and the Again, this is nothing new. Um, people, you know, are accusing her of allegedly killing her husband. She she <laughs> she fed him to the tigers, and we we knew this even when we went there. That was not. It was in the newspaper. It was in the St. Pete Times. It was in the Tampa Tribune. So this was a rumor that was floating around even back then. Yeah. 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 And so it was. Uh, it's it's one of those things that um, is now lingering over this place, Big Cat Rescue, and, um, you know, you don't know what to make about, uh, of it. And I know we had talked about this before. It's, it's, it's easy to say, oh, she, you know, she killed her husband, you know. Um, but you got to be fair about this. You know, there's, he's not been found. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows where he's at. Yeah, it is, it is unusual that he just disappeared, but, you know, 
we were talking, you know, amongst ourselves at, at one point saying, um, I don't know what my neighbors do. I don't know if they're burying bodies, <laughs> you know? I mean, if, if someone's husband or wife disappeared, it doesn't mean somebody, I mean, I know, you, you know, everyone goes immediately to the closest person to that person. Right. I get that. And according to the story, um, that Don was furious with her. Um, he wanted to get away from her. Um, she says they never had any arguments before his disappear a big argument. Um, and then the whole other big issue, and you'll see in the story of Tiger King, that um, they put in his will a power of attorney. Um, and while attorneys will tell you that's a little bit unusual if it's based on disappearance, she says the reason they did that was because flying to Costa Rica, people disappear in Costa Rica quite often. So she has stated that that's the reason she put it in the will. She admits it's probably not in every will, but that's the stickler part. So that power of attorney gave her when he disappeared, gave her the sanctuary and I would assume most of or at least part of Don's um money, you know, right. uh, he was supposedly a well-off guy, did well for himself, and that's what uh, uh, enabled her to afford the sanctuary and to keep Big Cat Rescue going. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird story, you know, and it's, um, um, I don't know what I feel about it, you yeah. know. Um, it is interesting, and people always do look at the ones closest to them of, uh, you know, who's when someone goes missing. But um, and they weren't getting along that well. I think he was looking to get a divorce, possibly, and um, you know. But I don't want to say someone did something and they did, you know. So I, it's just. Anyways, I, I I don't know. Yeah, it's. It, 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 I'd like to think he's uh, drinking a margarita in uh, Costa, Costa Rica. Rica. Or something. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't think that. I don't think he's uh, uh, with us anymore. But I, I mean, you, I, there's no way to possibly know the truth unless somebody comes forward, and um, you know. You know, many people think she fed him to the tigers. That's the big story as you watch Tiger King. But it does make a good story. <laughs> it is a good story. I, I don't know. I mean, that 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 seems like a, I don't know, a tedious process to, to chop me up and feed me to some lions. But, you know, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I just can't imagine someone doing that. But uh, that said, uh, who knows, right? Right. Um, did, did you see that... Uh, I don't know if you saw a while back that uh, OJ uh, commented yeah. about it. Did you see that? I did. <laughs> I just I, I, and and I and you know it's funny about OJ is that I'm really, you know, I think everyone's just tired of what bothered me about it was not him. Well, what bothered me about it was him. I, I don't even understand why he's talking to the media after he's what he's been through. That's what was so weird to me. Whatever. I, if I was OJ, I would go live in Costa Rica and hide and just go live my life and enjoy something. And uh, he just continues to, you know, he made he made a, a comment that, you know, a, a, you know, basically saying, oh, you know, Carol Baskin did this. And, you know, it's obvious and it's just it's just weird coming from him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing in this you could truly see throughout is how much people like attention and how much they like the media and they like being in the spotlight. And OJ is just another one of those people that he spent almost his whole life in the spotlight. And so now it's like, oh, great, I want to get back in, you know, and make comments. Yeah, so, I know. He, sometimes it reminds me of Trump. He can't stop talking and just stop talking. Yeah. OJ, just go enjoy your life. You served your time. Right or wrong, what people think, <laughs> just just be quiet. Don't get involved in the Tiger King issue, you know, because yeah. they're going to drag you in soon. And <laughs> we're going to find out you were involved in it. Uh, so I don't know. I just thought it was weird that he was uh, he was uh, talking comments, about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's your thought on uh, this series? You know, you uh, you and I have been and I guess I guess I. Uh, myself a little bit more than you. We have been to a lot of animal sanctuaries in our lifetime. What, what's just your, your viewpoint of the series? What what do you think of it after you got done with the, the six, seven episodes? I think, I th 
I loved the series, and I think it was extremely well done and well produced. And since we were also um, in the production business, it, I love the way that they put put it together. Yeah, I agree. And I thought they did a great job. Um, um, yeah, I, 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 I for a person that loves animals so much. It opened up my eyes to certain things that I've not really thought of before, and um, and I love that side of it. I also found it very sad at other times, um, just the way um, zoos are run, and um, and just there's so much work and energy and money that has to go into it, and that the animals have to be the top priority, and um, and and. I think it's sad sometimes when people might not have the finances. Like it broke my, I guess what I'm talking about, it broke my heart when Joe did not have that much money and his animals were the ones suffering from it because they did not have the proper food to give to them. Um, or at least that's the way I interpreted um, it in the in the show. That, that just really bothered me. And um, also a couple times um, it was portrayed that... Um, that they 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 killed the the animals for financial reasons yeah. and that that really bothered me too so yeah and i and i do know this from firsthand experience is that these animal sanctuaries across the country across the world it is hard to keep them going uh, yeah. it is week to week day to day um, year to year and many of them have to try to raise money throughout their communities get donations and it is very, very difficult. And I think what what uh, Joe Exotic figured out is, hey, you know, I know what people want to do. They want to take pictures with these things. And that was, I think, his golden goose. He started learning that, hey, people will come. They get to pet a tiger. They get to play with a, a baby tiger and then take a picture and they go home. And, and I can understand anyone for going to do it. I get it. it, it I mean, who? You know, who doesn't want to say they got to play with a, a tiger when you're a little kid or even a grown up? But I think that was the kiss of his death because, um, you know, the problem with that, I think they only said they've maybe got like four to five months or whatever as wow. a, a tiger that you can play with uh, in a in a um, in a setting mm -hmm. with uh, strangers. And then after that, what do you do with this tiger? And that's, of course, what Carol Baskin's issue, right. issue, uh, issue is. And that's what she's so pissed about is, guess where that tiger's gonna end up? You know, they're not gonna be able to take care of it. They're gonna sell it to a zoo. It's gonna be locked up or it's gonna go to some sanctuary if, if they're lucky, or they're gonna have to kill it. You know, they're gonna have to get rid of it. So. Um, yeah, I think that was, you know, and then he was probably making a good money, uh, some good money doing it. Finally, probably, you know, getting his head above water, you know, and, uh, yeah. and the same thing with the guy in Myrtle Beach, you know, yeah. um, that sanctuary. And I think both of them had been able to, you know, build a, a decent life, you know, but in the end, it's not good for the animals. It's yeah. not good for the place. And, you know, it's, it's not fair. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you remember that? Um, do you remember that sanctuary we went to in uh, Puerto Vallarta? Well, that's what I was just thinking of. Um, we we, I think it was a zoo. It was a zoo, in Puerto right? Vallarta. Right, that's true. And, and we had we were doing a story, yep. and we had a wonderful experience, um, and it was pretty much the same thing. And it was it was a, in my mind then it was a once in a lifetime opportunity to play with baby baby cubs and it was awesome and yeah and you see the video right there of you playing with it uh, our son was it in yeah. it um, and we you know we love that idea but you know yeah, it was it was great and but I even remember us talking about it what happens when they get older and you know and they do have other lions and tigers and in, in in the zoo and so you know, but there is such a short window. Yeah. And, uh, well, and they can only house so many so at many, that particular yeah. zoo, so they either have to go to another zoo in Mexico or the United States or, you know, somewhere else in the world, so they have to sell them and get rid of them. But, yeah, I don't think we could get a clear answer when we were there where exactly these, uh, yeah. you know, tigers went to. Um, but it was a cool, 
it was a cool place that you know they the it's anim- very clean it very was clean nice, and safe yeah. and it, it yeah. was a wonderful experience but you know i i know you and i have talked about over the years of of all the animal stories that we have done that we've sort of you know you can we've sort of evolved and you know we kind of look at that now and and i don't want to put words in into your mouth you can answer this but i've kind of evolved where i'm going eh, maybe this isn't the best idea for these these creatures yeah and you know when you're when you're sitting looking for things to do and you see wow i can go play with a, a baby tiger and you look at the pictures and it's so cool and and it really is a cool experience you don't think about what happens after that and you just sign up and you go and do it and i i think one thing that you and i are doing now is we're not just looking at it at the moment we're looking at it down the road and the consequences that then happen um i i'm not sure if i would want to do something like that now and um and especially after this film and seeing what could possibly could possibly happen or this uh, series um yeah a lot of folks are talking out there that this is sort of the uh, black fish moment for tigers and lions in captivity everyone is is you know, sort of making the comparison to what happened with Blackfish and SeaWorld right here in this town. Yeah. And, um, you know, all of a sudden people were, you know, <laughs> angry at Shamu <laughs> and not happy with Shamu suddenly being in this habitat. And, right. you know, um, you and I have talked about this, you know, SeaWorld has done so many wonderful things over the years, great things. They got us caring about dolphins and, and uh, whales, but because believe me, when I was a kid, nobody cared at all about them, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And so, but I, yeah, a lot of people are just saying this is this may be a turning point that everyone finally goes. You know, we, these these animals in captivity like this, it has to change. Yes, and one thing that really shocked me in this is that there's more big cats in captivity than they are out in the wild. Yeah. And it's like, what are we? What are we doing to our world? Why? Yeah. Why? Why is it that way? And what can we do to change it? And I don't have the answers to it, but it's almost like, okay, we need to take a step back. There's something wrong with this with this picture. Um, and I do know when I go to zoos now, I feel very differently now than I did when I was a child. Um, because I do sense that they want to run free and they want to do things. Um, you and I um, had a wonderful opportunity to go shoot the mountain gorillas in Africa. And after seeing them in the wild and in their own uh, habitat, it's so weird for me now to go to a zoo and to see them in, even if it's the best enclosure, the best you know place that they can have, it's still different. They don't have the miles of, of mountain forest to, to run through. And yeah, yeah, well, the mountain gorillas are literally yeah. trapped on these volcanoes, yeah, and everyone around Rwanda, it's all built up. So they literally, sometimes they said they wander into town or near yeah. the edge of the some of the farming villages and stuff around there. But, yeah, they've got nowhere to go. They're trapped. Right. They're yeah. literally uh, trapped in, in that. And, and, and then they have their own problems with that, too. There's people poaching, yeah. you know, the, uh, the gorillas and... Um, um, I do know when we were doing that, not to get off subject, but when we were with the mountain gorillas, the, um, uh, our guides, you know, had um, machetes and guns with them. And it wasn't to protect us from the gorillas. It was to protect the gorillas from other people coming in. And, um, you know, and... and yeah, I, I think yeah. they would have shot us first before killing one of those gorillas. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> those guys but, were dedicated. But it was dedicated. also there to protect yeah. from poachers yeah. coming in. Oh, yeah, it's a yeah. real problem, guys yeah. going in there. And, well, you can't, listen, you, you you can't blame somebody that lives in that part of Africa and all they're trying to do is, you know, eat and survive and, you know, get on with the next day. So for them, killing a gorilla would probably be equivalent to us killing a a cow you know i want to eat and i'll do what i need to do to survive so i listen it's not right i get it we love the gorillas but i also understand those people are just trying to do their best to to go on and i would assume you know if we look back with tigers people the same thing now i know there's a lot of you know poaching and you know 
they do all kinds of weird things they do with tigers. Tigers are kind of weird though. Tigers are even a little bit different because the mountain gorillas really weren't trying to kill you when you go up there, even though they've been sort of <laughs> habituated. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not trying to attack you, but tigers are are predatory. They will, they will hunt a person yeah. down. Well, they, your food, your food, your food. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the few animals in the in the food chain that will look you, you know. Mm -hmm look for you and, and hunt you down. So yeah, it's a weird thing. What do we do with these things in the, you know, places like India and stuff where, you know, these, these, these creatures have been roaming around freely forever. It's hard, yeah, it probably, it's probably safer in the cages, right? <laughs> Right it, for 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 the tigers for the tigers for the, well yeah. for both yeah 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 right well I think that's why there are more in cages than in in, uh, in yeah. the wild yeah I mean you can't have them you know walking around Mumbai just walking around down the street right yeah <laughs> I don't know you, you you know how I feel about yeah animals and we're just I, I I view it as we're taking over their land you know I I. I believe that they were, you know, they they're in their land first, right. and then us humans come and and yeah, we, knock everything we, we knock down, trees and, down, yeah. and you know, yeah, so. get out of the way, and mm -hmm. yeah, and then we kill them. I mean, yeah. we do that, we do that here in Florida with just about every species, and you know, then we wonder why, you know, they're struggling. So yeah, it's definitely a overkill, overbuilding. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it's certainly a, a problem. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny about Tiger King. I. Um, I also refer to them as the Kardashians of Oklahoma. <laughs> of, of Oklahoma. I feel like uh, this could be, uh, this could just go on. I, 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 I hate to admit this. Um, I can't get enough of that show. I mean, I was really obsessed. Like when each episode ended, I, um, I was like, well, what, what, there's or not. What do you mean there's not another one? Yeah, yeah I was kind of sad that it. I, what, what's up with that? You know, as, as we went on, because I was the same way, and towards the end, it got to be so much of a train wreck that you just couldn't wait to see it happen. You knew where they were leading up to because they told us at the beginning, but it's just like, all right, I've got to see this through. And you're right, and it was sad when it when when it came to an end. Um, by the way, I did hear that they might have an extra episode right. for us. I think it's out there. I think it's out there. Yeah. <laughs> or it's coming. Uh, yeah. But um, but no, I I I agree. I agree with you. And um, yeah, it, it yeah. kind of reminds. And I oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, well, I was just going to say it. It also made me sad that um, that there was so much drug abuse. And when you're trying, when it costs so much to feed the animals. How did they have any money to buy the drug? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I'm like, wait a minute. Good, good feed, drug dealer out yeah, there. You need yeah. to feed the animals, not, right. not uh, you know. But um, I think I'd be taking drugs if I had to live on that ranch my <laughs> whole life, wouldn't you? <laughs> It'd be the only way to get through the nighttime hours, you know, or even the daytime. You yeah. know, it's just too um, too crazy of a place, you know. Yeah. And then having him as your boss, I don't. I mean, if he if he was like oh. that when the camera, well, the cameras were already always on. Yeah. Um, you know, according to the show, but uh, if he was like that, you know, behind the scenes, that would that that had to be horrible. Yeah. And then you're yeah. living on that. Property. Or when you're shooting guns at people as they went by, I was like, whoa, whoa. I'd be like, don't you point that gun at me, idiot! <laughs> oh God, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that was um, that was strange. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of. It reminded me of two things. It reminded me of the first time. I ever saw what I would call sort of, I don't know if this is the first, but first time I ever saw like what I would call reality TV. Two things came to mind. Uh, the, do you remember way back when, when Geraldo was doing his show and those people started throwing the chairs yes. and we were all like, what the frick is, what is that? What the heck is going on? And then, uh, and then the first time you really saw a full episode of Jerry Springer, it was just like, what is this? And you started thinking, I can't believe like people live, I can't believe people in my country mm. act and live like this. You know, it was that first time you were exposed to it. And it's sort of, this opens up even 
a further view of something you haven't seen before. And it's just, it's just so weird. Yeah. Am I, am I wrong on well, that? My heart was broken when, um, when all of um, the, um, the video footage for the reality show, when it went up into smoke and oh. flames, I was like, cause number, you know, from our viewpoint, it's like, I know about all that hard work oh and just, you put your heart and soul into something and you know the shots you've got and you're so excited and you can't wait to put it together. And then to see it all go up in flames, I was so sad for him, but I was also so sad for all of us as the viewers because we would have loved to have seen all that footage and, and you know. Was, it, what, what was um, the guy that was producing, Rick, is that his name? Is I'm that, not sure. Yeah, yeah, the guy from Inside Edition. Okay. Yeah, he, he seems like a real smart guy, yeah, yeah, intelligent like guy, and uh, seemed like he, <laughs> I think he was just stuck there and goes, all right, I'm going to get through this. Yeah. And Because uh, this is so good. I've got to get through this. And uh, I, yeah, yeah. I, You know, I worked in Vegas, too. I think he was a reporter in Vegas, too, mm. I think for like Channel Channel 3. Anyways, I kind of remember him a uh, long million years ago. But um, but um, I can't imagine like what oh. you were saying, what he must. I guess he had kept the, the backups in a safe. Is that my understanding? A safe? I think in, you told me that. Did yeah. I? Yeah. A safe in that same room where they fried all the alligators. And and, and oh. I think the safe melted where the tapes were at. Mm. But I, I could yeah. just imagine you're putting all this work in, putting up with all this to hopefully do a reality show. Right. And, you and walk he's out like, this there. is my retirement. <laughs> I, I can't imagine. Yeah. Oh. He must have just cried. Yeah, yeah. They got, they got to, they got to do something for him. Mm. That was terrible. I know. I could feel for him. I know. I really felt for him. You know, and all, and all the other people, all the other characters in there. Um, you know, people sort of make fun of them, and you know, oh, they're, you know, guy with no teeth, and I, I think all those people were really nice people. Yeah. I really do. I think they were hardworking people. You know, they're getting like something like I like a hundred dollars a that week. That was crazy. Oh, I couldn't believe that. Oh, uh, uh, and then working like 12, 14 hour days oh my and God. living there and oh and, and then they're yeah. dumping off the meat from Walmart and um and then you're sorting through it going, All right, at least I can eat some steak. Yeah. It's only a couple it's days. It's all expired. Yeah, it's a couple days old. It'll be fine. I'll I'll fry that up tonight. Mm. Like Yeah. You know, I mean, and you just need a job. And they're up in you know, some town in Oklahoma that, you know, what what else are they going to do? You know, they either got to quit and leave and go somewhere else or you right. you put up with it, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I thought it was weird, too. I don't know oh. if you give. Oh, go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, well, I was just going to say, as much as I love animals and my heart, a lot of it went towards the animals. You also do fall in love with the people with all the characters yeah. and even though you don't agree with what they're doing at times and even though at times you know you're really mad at what they're doing you still learn to love them as a person you know and uh and and yeah so so you end up loving all the characters which was which was cool well, even, the... even though you don't agree with them some of the time you still you still end up uh, having compassion for them. Yeah, the know. key the key word is characters. There's <laughs> they, they are a group of characters, but I they they need they need to do more episodes. Characters in the series. <laughs> characters in the series. Oh. They're they're probably freaked out how big this thing is. Oh, I bet they're on. so excited. You yeah. think? Oh yeah. Think they yeah. like that? Yeah. I bet they're surprised. <laughs> I've heard multiple people talk about how uh, how they can't wait to get uh, Halloween costumes as, oh, as all of them right. for, for Halloween. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, uh, Joe Exotic is going to be, we're going to see him, you know, that costume knocking on our door, you yeah. know? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's going to that's gonna be, yeah, you're oh. right, I hadn't thought about that. That's going to be big. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's also cool. It's, you know, we're, we're in the middle of the coronavirus right now, and that's like brought the world together. But it's also in a weird, cool way that the Tiger King, you hear everyone talking about that um, almost more than any other show I can, yeah. I can remember in a while. So, um, so it's almost kind of cool how the world has come together to watch that and people are talking about that too. But then what does it say about us that we are I don't attracted know. <laughs> to this bizarro world? Like, I mean, what uh, what's wrong with me that I look at that and go, oh, I can't get enough of this. You know, is it a train wreck that I just love? I mean, I thought about that as I'm watching this, like, 
I had a little bit more interest, obviously, because I had been to, and you had been to Big Cat Rescue, mm -hmm. and we, you know, had spent time there, and we got to know Carol, and so when this hit, it was like, whoa, I know those people, yeah. you know? Yeah. I know those workers. I've you know? walked those grounds. You've I, walked I, those I, grounds. I've been there, yeah. yes, yes. So, and, um, but I, what is it that I love, those, yeah. <laughs> the story? Yeah. I guess it's got all the elements of a good story. Well, I think I think because you watched it before I did, and uh, and I remember I don't know walking in and asking you a question, and you're like, you can't make this stuff up. This is just unbelievable. It's some one thing after another, after another, after another, and and it is. It just um, it 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 was, and it's a great story. But again, the way they also put it together, I thought they did a great job with that with that too. Yeah. No, you're right. The uh, directors. Uh, or director uh, and producers, they they did a nice job putting all that together because mm -hmm. that's a ton of video yeah. to to edit and go. What the hell do we do with this? Yeah. You know, you got to remember you've got all these days and days of uh, video and and how do you assemble this and make this interesting? I, I thought they did a real good job yeah. piecing it all together. They really did because with so much, yeah, it could be very challenging to put together and also to tell a good story. Right, because they'd be you know bouncing from Myrtle Beach to Oklahoma, right. to Florida. And you know, and then they included other places too. And uh, um, yeah, I, I, I think that that just really the way they brought it together was just really, really, really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess maybe we've we've learned something about um, animals in captivity. You yeah. know, especially some of these big cats. Maybe maybe this will be the turning point. Maybe zoos will. It'll be interesting if zoos, you know, start to get a lot of kickback in terms of, you know, the public going, you know, you need to take those tigers out. You need to take those lions out. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a question. And we haven't talked about this beforehand, but remember that, do you, well, do you know why they can't take lions and tigers from captivity and put them back in the wild. I remember that one video that was on YouTube, um, and I forget the name of the lion, but remember the guy went out oh, yeah. and, and the lion just ran oh. up to him and like gave him a big hug. It was so beautiful, I cried. And so it obviously can be done. Do, do you know why it's not done more often? Uh, the video you're talking about, I cry, I almost cry oh, every time I so see that. He's the, 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 there's a, I don't know if we're gonna be able to show it on this, but um, there's a, a great video out there of a guy who was raised like a lion uh, for, since it was a cub, mm -hmm. and he had released it back in the, in the wild, and he goes back years later to where like they dropped the lion off and the lion comes running. And you think the lion's just gonna rip his head off. Well, you don't know. You don't, yeah, know. You don't know. He doesn't yeah. know. Right. I don't know, maybe he tested it. <laughs> before before he got the camera rolling but um yeah and then the lion's just hugging him oh. and all excited I, I i was so mad he had to leave i wanted him to live yeah. the rest of his life in the jungle <laughs> yeah no you're I, I i would assume like anything that gets uh, habituated it gets used to humans um i don't know that it gets used to getting its food from humans yeah, that maybe. that becomes a problem and i would assume also there's a problem they can't hunt anymore because they they never even learned how to hunt. Yeah. You know, you saw you saw the, the meat being dropped off, <laughs> you know, by the, the truckload. Like, what tiger in, in Joe Exotic's place knows how to hunt, you know? Yeah. I mean. I guess that's true because most of them were born in right. captivity and then just. Right. Yeah. They're, every day they're just going, where the frick is my meat? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, feed. You know, oh, real quick. That, that freaked me out. Too, I want to talk about this real quickly. Was um, how much meat was being wasted? It has to be thrown oh. out. That was. I'm assuming that was like yeah. one grocery store. Maybe it was a couple. And you'll see the the meat that Walmart donated to that place, which was wonderful. Right. Instead of just throwing it out. But yeah. can you imagine if we took all the meat at all the grocery stores every week? That yeah. is wasted. Um, I know Joe and Exotic. And what, what do other places do with it? I, I mean, know. obviously Throw this Walmart out. gave it to yeah. to Joe's Zoo, but what what yeah what do other yeah places, are they throwing out that much meat? I, I, of course, of course they are. Sure, and you know people have made the comparison like hundreds of thousands of animals that are being slaughtered, uh, you, uh, you know, for no reason. So yeah. meat meat can be uh, wasted. So you know, just look at that and and malt and then go around the world. That you know, we're one country. That's yeah. 
that's really bizarre. That's a whole another story within itself yeah. of how we, you know, slaughter animals and then waste the food. You yeah. know, at least I'll always say about hunters, you know, you may not agree with everything a hunter does, but one thing I've always admired about somebody that hunts, they don't waste. You know, they take the meat, they freeze it, they take it home, and they eat it throughout the year. I mean, this is just a crunk coming from a grocery store and just dumped. And yeah. I don't know, it's just weird. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was a ton of food, just yeah. just wasted. And you're right, that's another another good story that uh, yeah. that, that hopefully someone's either already done or will do because that was that was a lot. Yeah, but talk, wait, talking about that meat real fast. Then to hear that they sold it in their, the 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 restaurant on the uh, zoo property. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> to people, it was like, oh gosh. Right. Well, I don't think. Do you think meat? I mean, everyone's done it at home. Like, I don't know. Uh, like meat, like expired a couple of days. It's not going to taste that weird, is it? Uh, I right? don't know. I think people are different. Some people really look at the label. Right, right. But I don't know. Like what, what me it, and some people yeah, don't yeah, like, like me. I, I, yeah. yeah, three days old. That looks good. Is it, wait, it doesn't smell funny. Yeah, you and I are different about but that. that. They, that's what they say. Smell it yeah. and go from right. there. But but yeah, yeah. But yeah, I would just if it doesn't smell bad, even if it's a little browner than. Oh. I'll, I'll eat it. Well, I figure. I always figured like the the grill's gonna kill it. I, oh. I always feel like the grill's gonna do the work and and my food's gonna. <laughs> It's gonna taste normal now, but I have smelled oh. meat before where you like you went, oh man, that's bad. Yeah, and then you throw it out. But, mm. but yeah. at least the animals were eaten, and I do like that. <laughs> yeah, because their their stomachs can handle it better too. Bacteria. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's yeah. weird. Yeah. All right, so maybe you know, as we wrap up, talk about uh, the Tiger King. You know, uh, we'll put that story on Florida TV, which you can watch that story, um, in our lesson. Maybe, maybe we've evolved mm -hmm. in doing stories at sanctuaries that aren't true rescue places. You know, they're right. not animal factories. And that's, like, real fast, that's the other thing. We also have done a lot of stories at sanctu sanctuaries where it is rescued animals right. when um, the, the moms um, are killed and, and the babies yeah. need a place to go. And, and, and so there are a lot of good sanctuaries out there um, that are there to help animals and support animals and uh, and not just breed and and uh, and house them. Yeah, yeah. It's like you, it's too bad you can't release them back in the wild. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know. There's probably experts out there that could tell you more why that wouldn't work. But uh, that would be that would be the ultimate plan. Yeah, like too bad there's not like some big giant piece of land somewhere, and that you just can't let them go there. And live, right. you know, and even if they were still and feeding them, that, that, yeah, that's but like, at least they could still run and enjoy their life. But you know, that's kind of what Carol's doing at her place. She just doesn't have the land. You got to remember where Carol Baskin's place is. She's surrounded in Tampa. Well, that was you know? the, I, that was one thing that I remember is when we first went there. It's yeah. like, oh, who would ever thought this would be in the middle of Tampa? Right. Florida? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can see the skyscrapers yeah. of uh, downtown Tampa not far from her place. Right. So it's, yeah, right. it's, I don't think she's got a ton of land to uh, expand, you know, and then cages yeah. get expensive. How much do you spend on that? And, you know, yeah. everything is about money at the, at the end of the day. But, you know, the one thing I will say about her place, she's just, all right, these people, you know, people from zoos to circuses have gotten tired of these animals. Commercials are another big one. Yeah. Like, you know, when every time you see something on a commercial these days with mm -hmm. a tiger or a lion, you might want to think about that, yeah. where that animal's coming from, because it's not always good. And again, that's one of those things that you, in the moment, you go, oh, that's so cute. Yeah, of oh, course. look at that. Oh, look at the chip in this commercial. I love it. And you don't think it through what's going to happen after that. And um, um, But you're right. In the moment, you love it. But, but yeah, you need to ask yourself, okay, do I want to support what this then means? And um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. We've learned a lesson from the uh, Tiger King. We learned something from Joe Exotic. Don't do what Joe Exotic does. <laughs> so we should thank him. We should all thank him. Oh. It's going to get us to rethink what we do to big cats. Yeah. 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 Well, Kathleen, thank you for coming into a place that you always come into. Thank you, Randy. Because I know you, I, I know you didn't want to like sit here. I, I can understand. Oh. It's torturous. But thank you. You gave some, some good insight. And uh, maybe it'll give some people some thought. Yeah. You know? 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much. All right. And we're out of here.